By the way, I totally ripped off this video idea from Russ of Path Less Pedaled, so be sure to go check out his video. But mine are different. So, number one, fixed gear bikes. The dogma with serious cyclists that they push onto other cyclists that aren't as quote unquote serious as them is that you have to go as fast as possible all the time and try to optimize your bike, your body, and your clothing as much as possible to go as fast as possible. And to do that, you should not be riding a fixed gear bike because it's a very limited form of bike. But I love face gear so much, and you already know it, so I won't belabor the point that face gear is the most fun I've ever had on a bike. And just that connected feeling with the drivetrain and even the limitation that it gives you makes for a completely unique riding experience that you can't get on any other type of bike. I ride bikes for fun, and the most fun that I have on a bike is on a face gear. Number two steel frame sets. Serious cyclists tend to frown upon steel as a frame building material because it's old and outdated and heavier and less aerodynamic than other more exotic materials like carbon fiber or titanium. Other more modern frame materials can be made into more exotic shapes for better aerodynamics and stiffness to weight ratios, making them theoretically faster than steel. But steel is an incredibly practical material to build a bike out of, and it's also super fun to ride. Steel is pretty resistant to dents, making it great for lockups. You can still ride a steel frame set after crashing it, and high quality steel frame sets can be super fun to ride. Yeah, steel frame sets are probably not going to make for the fastest bikes possible under the UCI conditions, but I'm not racing under UCI rules and I'm not the fastest rider possible. At the end of the day, steel is a great material for a daily bike and I'm still one of the fastest riders on pretty much any group ride that I've been on. Speaking of steel bikes, this video is sponsored by Wabi Cycles. From Wabi's own meticulously hand-built wheels to the track lacrosse ready velocity coils to the ever popular H plus one archetypes laced to your favorite hubs from Phil Wood, Grand Comp, DT Swiss, and my personal favorite, the Suzu Pro Maxes. Top it off with the most reliable tires from Continental and Panaracer, throw in an EAI cog in the flavor of your choice, and your favorite chain from KMC and Azumi, and your bike will make your inner fixie kids squeal with joy. So go ahead, check out Wabi Cycles and their component selection linked in the description. Number three is Frame Flex. A lot of serious cyclists have this idea that stiffer frame sets are better because they have better power transfer from what you're putting out to what is going into the drivetrain and propelling you forward. It makes you go faster is the prevailing theory. But I'll push back on that and say Frame Flex is hugely underrated and the right amount of Frame Flex can make you faster, more comfortable, and let you have more fun. Call it planing or having the right flex patterns. When you push down the pedals, it'll feel like the frame will flex and then bounce back up at precisely the right time to help feel like the bike is not just going forward, but helping to push you forward and encourages you to ride even harder. Although I haven't done any scientific testing, I've found that I'm personally faster, more comfortable, and have more fun on bikes that have the right amount of frame flex, which are usually high quality steel bikes like my Wabi Special here. Having enough flex in the frame sets also helps the bike to absorb bumps in the road, making it just way more comfortable. I've ridden a lot of frame sets that were just way too stiff for me. I know a lot of serious cyclists, if they hear that, they will probably roll their eyes or scoff at the idea of a bike being too stiff because stiffer is faster, right? Well, not in my experience. If bikes with the right amount of flex feel lively, bikes that are too stiff feel completely dead. When I ride a super stiff bike, every pedal stroke feels like I'm stomping on concrete and it really wears out my legs and makes them sore and tired after not that long of riding. And I can't put as much power out into the pedals when I'm riding a bike that's too stiff. I just get tired more easily. That's not the case on a bike with the right amount of flex. Flex is something that really makes bike riding more enjoyable for me. And because of that, I will probably never ride a super stiff frame set. And at the end of the day, I'm still able to drop riders that are on much stiffer, much more aerodynamic frame sets than me and my quote unquote outdated steel frame set. Clipless pedals are often seen as the only serious choice for serious cyclists because they theoretically allow you to go a lot faster. But I find that 
a good set of toe clips and straps on my fixed gear to strike the perfect balance for power transfer, comfort, and style. Look, I'm not somebody who only rides my bike to go as fast as possible all the time. I mainly ride my bike for transportation. I'm biking to the grocery store, I'm biking out to restaurants and bars and cafes. I don't want to look like a cyclist waddling in on my clipless shoes, but if you do, that's perfectly fine. I've ridden clipless before and I've liked it, it's just that for practicality and for daily use. I'll take a set of toe clips and double straps over clipless any day of the week. Although you can't exactly rock a set of Crocs like Russ does with toe clips and straps, they allow you to wear sneakers and boots, which is what I wear like 99% of the time. <laughs> they still give me plenty of power transfer, they still give me plenty of control over the rear of my bike and allow me to skid or hop, and the fact that I could just throw on my chucks and go out and ride my bike makes me ride my bike a whole lot more. Related to that, this is what I bike in just my regular everyday clothes. And a lot of serious cyclists would scoff at the idea of riding in a regular hoodie or a t-shirt or jeans because you lose a lot of speed, a lot, <laughs> to drag. But again, I mainly ride my bike for transportation or if I'm just going out with the homies and riding around. Riding in these clothes make it supremely convenient for me because I can just hop on my bike whenever I want and have fun that way. And the places that I go to, like friends' houses or the aforementioned grocery store, bars, restaurants, are much more comfortable to be in in just regular quote unquote pedestrian clothes. A lot of serious cyclists have been convinced that you need to wear cycling specific clothes to ride a bike, but people have been riding bikes since the 1800s and they wore suits and top hats when they rode bikes. Regular clothes, they breathe plenty fine when you're on the bike. Look, you're gonna get sweaty regardless of what type of high tech material versus like regular ass cotton material you're wearing. Biking is a sweaty activity, but on top of that, just regular clothes are more comfortable off the bike, which I frequently do when I ride my bike. I love riding with my friends, but because I ride my bike every day, a lot of them apologize to me that they're not as fast as me and have this idea that I only like to ride my bike fast, but that's really not the case. I actually really enjoy just riding at a really slow conversational pace and spending time with friends from time to time, and sometimes I'll even just cruise around the neighborhood for fun. Riding slow is severely underrated and everything about cycling seems to always be about riding as fast as possible all the time. But the reason anybody gets into bicycling is because it's fun. It's like when you were when you were seven years old or whatever, did you get on a bike because you wanted to go as fast as possible? Hell no, you just wanted to ride around the neighborhood, hang out with friends and have fun. And that's still the case for me a lot of times. There are times for riding fast and there's times for riding slow and that's perfectly okay. Yeah, Usain Bolt is the fastest man in the world, but that doesn't mean he can't enjoy a walk every now and then. <laughs> fast rides and slow rides are fun in different ways, but that doesn't mean one is better than the other. When you're riding fast, you're in the zone and it's all about the ride. But when you're riding slow, it becomes more so about the people and just spending time together and that is a ton of fun. <laughs> and the number seven thing that I love that serious cyclists hate are alt bars. A lot of serious cyclists think that unless you're riding drop bars, you're riding your bike wrong. Because drop bars offer a lot of hand positions, they're comfortable, and they're also aerodynamic. It's the best of everything. They also look great. Like, it's a win-win-win. But alt bars, they serve their purposes too. Like, I'm riding 710 millimeter wide middle bull mooses, and this is legitimately the handlebar that I've had on my bike for the past, like, mostly for the past year. And they're kind of dumb, don't get me wrong, but they're not as comfortable as drop bars, they're not nearly as aerodynamic, I can't go as fast on these, but they are just a ton of fun to ride with how much leverage and control they give over the front end of the bike. I could just flick the bike around wherever I dang please with these bars on. When I go trackle crossing, I am super glad that I have these bars. I'm also a huge fan of sweat back townie bars. I used to ride some Nitto Bosco bars on my All City Nature Boy back in the day, and a lot of people made fun of me for riding grandpa bars that were But again, at the end of the day, I was still faster than pretty much anyone that I would go on a group ride with with those bars on. And they gave great visibility and had a super comfortable wrist angle to just cruise around town. And the basket and front rack clearance that you get on alternative bars, drop bars just really can't hold a candle to it. And sweatback townie bars have this magical ability to make a bike fit almost anybody. I have townie bars on the All City Nature Boy right now, and it fits everybody from 
my friend who's like five foot seven, all the way up to me who's six foot. Being upright is a lot more relaxing on a bike and you can just sit back, look around and enjoy the nice scenery around you rather than just trying to always make the KOM every single time. <laughs> drop bars, they're certainly great, and I love drop bars myself, but there are certainly other types of bars that have their purposes and can completely change the way you ride your bike and help you to enjoy riding your bike in an entirely different way. Are there any things that you love that serious cyclists hate? Let me know in the comments below. Or maybe you're just a serious cyclist and you hated everything I talked about. That's fine too. Just don't tell me how to ride my bike and I won't tell you how to ride your bike. <laughs> Fixie Famous shouts to Mario Perez, Brandon Black, David Cage, Yu, Dezero, Julian Corona, Ryan Wood, Scott Palongi, and Zane Kolnick for helping to make these videos possible through their support on Patreon. Remember that life is short, but don't make it shorter, so be sure to ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous.